Hello and welcome to a tournament, a tournament, a tournament of lies, a weekly podcast where three friends from around the world attempt to rate every single video game ever made in order of bestness. I'm Danny in Oakland, Dennis Walsh in Waterford, Ireland. How are you doing? How, is, how good. are things? Thank you. Things are well, I suppose. <laughs> James O'Connor, you're looking wonderful. Sparkosoft still, that flag flying high down in Hollywood, it is. California. Um, I'm still waiting on that first check uh, and I'm buying a lot of stuff on credit, so okay, we'll right. hopefully get it together and we'll see what happens. That's usually how small businesses succeed, I think. Yes, I think so. Yeah. Uncle Sam at work. Uh, what have you guys been playing this week, outside of the the list? Yeah, so played a bit of Overwatch, a few Purgatory Gems, Dota, surprisingly. Um, and yeah, I think that's about it. What's the thought on Overwatch right now, James? What are you thinking? Um, I like it. It's it's I'm I played more than I thought I would. Uh, it's sort of fun and it's a good game to sort of pick up and. You end up spending 30 minutes on, get a few rounds, just walk away and go back to it. Um, it's also kind of, while there's not that much comparison, it's sort of almost what I would have wanted from uh, Star Wars Battlefront, because we sort of all jumped on it a while ago. And it's, that is very one-dimensional, and I feel that there's like a little edge, or there's, there's a funness, the pace uh, to Overwatch is good. Uh, the variety of characters is good, and uh, it's fun so far. So it's 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 good. It it definitely reminds me of Team Fortress, but it does have its own feel to it as well. Yeah, it's so. kind of like it reminds me of a lot of I don't know. I feel like I'm playing this game in the way that I used to play like Team Fortress, and kind of like CS, where it's like I'm sitting down and like oh I play like two rounds, and then an hour later I'm I'm still playing it like. Uh, yeah, no, there's, there's there's similarities too to that as well. What do you uh, think, Dennis? Good. You're kind of an old CS head as well. What are you enjoying it? Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I, I can see the comparisons, but I'm not sure. I, it, it's very much its own thing. It's it's a real mesh of different stuff. But I am enjoying it. I think it's fun, and yeah, it's a nice diversion from from Dota. But uh, I, I I guess coming from Dota, you you you, you want to learn the characters because you you know just how important those skills are. Now I'm sure anyone does. You don't have to come from Dota to know that. But yeah, it's, there's a real kind of onus on it coming from that side. So uh, like I feel like really under knowledged right yeah yeah. Images, I believe. <laughs> yeah we should play some this afternoon uh, both of you guys also played the stanley parable i believe i have not yet dived into our purgatory bin uh how long did it take you to play dennis uh well okay so my story with it's a little bit funny i don't know if you want me to get into it but i'm D- going not, to get into not, it. not the whole one but yeah get a little bit yeah so i played a couple of like i'd say like two kind of playthroughs Right. Um, and it took me about half an hour, and I was kind of like, "Cool, no, nah, it's not bad." And then I was kind of talking to my brother about it, and he's like, no, you, "You need to play it more, and just try <laughs> things." So I did that, and I put about two hours into it. Um, mm. and then I then I loved it. Okay. All right. Interesting. James, you played much of it? Yeah. Do we want to do it now, or should no, we wait for you? No, I we'll feel like we we'll wait for you. Wait next um, week. I, I, I did. I did play it. Uh, and um, so far, without listening it or going into Dutch details. It's the th- thumbs are pointing upwards. Okay. That's all I'll say about it then. We'll get right. into it later. So if anyone has any thoughts on it or wants to play it themselves, uh, by all means, pick up the Stanley Parable, send in your emails, lies at a tournament of lies dot com. Uh, speaking of feedback, actually, uh, we have some feedback. A new section on the podcast, gentlemen. Uh, so people have been sending in emails. We also got some YouTube comments. Um, so I got a couple of them here. First one up is from E Bunny, who posted on last week's uh, episode on YouTube. Minesweeper, that low. In my eyes, it's a simple but well-designed game. I would have liked... uh, Sorry, it's kind of like chess or Go, for example. Arguably some of the best games ever made. Except I wouldn't rate Minesweeper quite that high. But still, an elegant and simple but well-designed game that is more valued to me than a mindless shooter like Call of Duty, for example. That's just me, though. I can see where you guys are coming from. Minesweeper, it's like chess, Dennis. No, that's a pretty well-reasoned argument. Um, Yeah, simplicity is... Is, is something that's often undervalued. Um, I just, I don't know. I think, yeah, chess is an incredible game that's lasted, and so is Go, these games that have lasted hundreds of years. Yes, so, Go, yes. yeah, it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't get the affection with Minesweeper, you know, and I, like anybody else who grew up with Windows 95 and 98 and 2000 and XP and Vista and everything else. You forgot Emmy. Uh, uh, yeah, nobody. No, that, 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 nobody that was a spin-off. That was a spin-off. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Not counting those, uh, but yeah, I just didn't. I don't know. I don't. I don't have that affection for it that I slightly mm. have for solitaire or whatever else. It's just, it, it was a really dreadful game. 
Uh, another game that we talked a lot about last week, Andrew O'Keefe mentions LA Noir. Uh, the problem with LA Noir to me uh, is was like the Order eighteen sixty six, which I sixty six eighty six. I put it down as sixty six. I think by accident. Um, dressed up inside interactive novel. Uh, there only was one right line of questioning out of three choices usually the most neutral option the other two leaving you accusing them of raping or beautifully murdering somebody outright at which point they'd get angry and never speak to you again uh, the presence of choice was just an illusion and a very shallow one and it won't take you long to get up to speed with the story just play the first chapter the following chapters just repeat the same formula over and over again uh, i don't think you could rank a game based on its aspirations if uh, it didn't exclude or execute on those aspirations uh, right, then it failed. I think LA D Noir deserves 21st. <laughs> uh, and it, he also goes on to say, also you held back The Witcher from a higher rating because you feel like it's entirely broken. Um, I played it through recently with no problems though. Uh, yet a game like The Order that works fine is marked down for being um, its only redeeming feature. So clearly being a full functioning technical marvel does not make a great game. I think that's very true. Uh, strong arguments all around. Uh, no, that is a very good point. That is one of the many things that happens with this list. I, in think, the I, think, I think there's been a little bit of kind of contextual jiggery pokery there. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like The Witcher, it's not because it's like old or whatever. It's because I find it like extremely unenjoyable to play. Mm. Uh, it's not just because it's a bit fidgety or doesn't look gorgeous that we've marked it down, or at least that I've marked it down anyway. Um, and yet, the order's only redeeming quality, and its last is that it looks good. Doesn't and it doesn't look crash as good as every two yeah. seconds. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. I, I I take the argument for sure. I think there's some really valid points there, but I think um, we didn't only mark those things for their technical feats mm. or lack thereof. I, I will say as well, the strong points that we did give La Noir were, you know, the technical aspects or what they like hoped to achieve, and maybe failed. Um, and it did get me thinking during the week as I was playing another game that was like a green light game, Clear, uh, clearly like a small studio, mm. probably three people on the team. That like, does that come into our decision making or, or part of the game? That like someone like Rockstar who has millions of dollars to spend on this, you know, they get a chance to sort of build something and maybe there's flaws to it, but they get away with it. Where maybe even a small team, like probably The Witcher One, had a small I mean, team. It's all about expectation again, right? It's like yeah. if you're going into a game knowing that this is like a pretty, you know, it's a fifteen dollar thing, and like your expectations are set one way. I mean, Rockstar have a pretty high watermark to hit with every game they make. Hey, what was the game you were playing though? Uh, it was Stasis. I finally went back oh, into yeah. Stasis. The game I said. Um, and and uh, long story short, I'm sure it'll be on this list at some point. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, but again, that was like I'd say it was a super small team. Mm. But what they did and what they achieved was really well. Um, and as an aside story of L.A. Noir, after we did it on the list last week, it did get me a little nostalgic where I was like, man, I should actually go back and properly play it. Because I only mm. messed around really on the PS3. I think I borrowed a copy and just didn't get to it. Uh, and I tried to buy it on Nuvem. And uh, after a few failed attempts, I put in my credit card information. And the <laughs> game hasn't appeared yet. And every day since, I've been staring at my credit card statement, waiting to see how many boats I'm going to buy in Brazil. <laughs> so, uh, lesson learned. I don't know what's going on with PayPal and Nuvem. But just stay away from now. I nah. think anyone who buys stuff on Nuvem, it's not working right now. I, uh, I tried to get um, Battlefield Vietnam during the week. Uh, it is impossible to buy it anywhere. They're not oh, selling really? it on Origin Store. It's not on Steam. I'm wondering if it has something to do with the um, the soundtrack rights, maybe, or something like that. Uh, but yeah, I guess, we're, we're, I guess uh, I don't know. I think I have a copy of it lying around. I think my copy might be back in Waterford. So, <laughs> Dennis, if you want to just mail it over to me. I think be, I still have good. a copy of it, actually. Oh, really? Super good. Yeah, I think so, like an actual yeah DVD ROM. Uh, let's get into the list. Let's get into the, the, the latest, I guess, version of the list. Um, our list right now has grown. It's a, it's a, it can drink now. It's over 21 years old. It's 22 deep. Super Mario World sitting on top still. Uh, we got a couple of entries last week. L.A. Noir in the 6th, Gone Home at 13th, uh, almost right in the middle. Minesweeper 21st, but it's still better than the Order 1886, which is right down the bottom, number 22. All right, I got three... Games. I got a bunch of games in front of me here from all the wonderful, beautiful people who sent them in via lies at eternaladvice.com or just by posting them in the YouTube comments. We check there as well. Um, first one. It's from first three, rather. Nick Dumain or Nick Dumania. I don't know how he pronounces his name. Uh, he's got three great games uh, spanning a, a long period of time. The first of which I'm probably going to pass over to you to find, gentlemen, as it is a SNES or Super NES video game that came out in 1995. It is the second of the Donkey Kong Country's Diddy Kong's Quest. Have you guys played this? Yes. 
Good. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your rating? Good. No, no go for it. Speak uh, okay. Yeah, um, yeah, have you played this? You have, right? Uh, bits, but okay. no, I wouldn't have a uh, super super knowledge on it. Nah. Okay, James, go for it. Um, Diddy Kong's Quest is a good one. It's been a while since I've played it, though. I picked it up on the virtual console on the Wii when it came out a little mm. while ago, uh, just to go through it again. It was definitely the one of the three I had played the least, but I did get fairly far into it. Um, I mean, it's sort of one of those interesting things, because it's sort of like hard really to comment on. The biggest thing it's missing is Donkey Kong itself. Like, oh. the whole backstory is that the Donkey Kong's been kidnapped, and it's Diddy Kong and Dixie Kong going to save him. Right, so, so it's like Metal Gear Solid Two of the Donkey Kong series. Yeah, and it's and like I mean, honestly, I think even in three doesn't have Donkey Kong as well, or maybe there's more characters. Yeah, I think Donkey think Kong Country is, Three is Dixie Kong's Double Trouble came out in like yeah, and it's 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 Dixie and it's uh like some weird baby like almost like that. Who's that guy in the Goonies that they rescue? Mongo. It's like a Mongo version of Donkey Kong <laughs> running around. He's like the other. He's the player too. Um, the one thing I will say though about Donkey Kong 3 is they sort of made it slightly world mapish that you would go around mm. whereas uh, being honest Donkey Kong 2 it sort of almost just has its sequel feel to it alright it, like, it sounds like we're not too knowledgeable about exactly like we're, we're sort of the three of us probably can't pull together a ranking on, on this one maybe basically yeah, do you want to I mean, do, do you want to see if we can maybe virtual console this thing up for a for a that I, worked I, for I, me I for, forgot the name of the section yeah, it's, uh, purgatory. It's a bit of purgatory, yeah. Yes. Probably of all the Donkey Kong games, my maybe the only one I haven't played. Nearly yeah, well, uh, yeah, well, that's the thing. Like, obviously, like Donkey Kong Country, Donkey Kong sixty four. I know that these are all games that you guys have played. Uh, yeah. All right, let's move on then. Let's let's put that okay, one to the move. side. We'll find out. If not, you can always get a ROM. I mean, it's a SNES game. It's not gonna be that hard to find somewhere on the internet. Uh, okay, next game. This is. Uh, Perhaps if 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 not my, it's it definitely my top five games of the last generation. I will okay. say. This is a wonderful game which came out in two thousand and seven on the Xbox three hundred and sixty and the PlayStation three. It came out of a relatively unknown studio of uh, a subsidiary of Electronic Arts called Black Box, and it was essentially the game that sort of went, okay, Tony Hawk. We can do this too. Uh, it's a skate. Oh yeah, Dennis, you played skate, right? Oh yeah, skate is uh, it's pretty glorious. But uh, how, how do we talk about this without talking about the sequels? You know? Yeah, I know, sequels right? Are so good. Think the it's like talking about it's improved. like talking about Assassin's Creed One. Yeah. Um. Uh, <clears throat> oh my God. Do I love skate? Absolutely. It, uh, it was it better than any Tony Hawk came before it. One hundred percent. Uh, better than any Tony Hawk game before uh, it. Better than Tony Hawk 2 and Tony Hawk 3. By a uh, fair margin, absolutely. Really? Guys. You're right. living on nostalgia, no question. Come on, come on. <laughs> well, wasn't the whole thing with Skate that it was more realistic? Yeah. That it was way more, like, the, gra the gravity actually made sense. It wasn't like an arcade game. It was like, more it, as if you were it, an actual It played skate. differently. So Tony Hawk was a game that was basically a combo game where you were trying to chain stuff together. You were yeah. jumping from grind rails and doing manuals and trying to chain, like, these massive, ridiculous yeah. things and together. And magnetic things. Yeah, exactly. Whereas Skate was a game that, you know, it wasn't a complete physics demo. It wasn't, like, one-to-one -one or anything. But it was a game where you, you know, to do a kickflip... You had to like it wasn't just a case of like pressing square and hitting left or whatever. Like you had to rotate the analog stick in a sort of a, a unique manner, and it wasn't like like Dennis said you'd, you'd hook on to the the rails in the first in the original Tony Hawk games, but in Skate you had to like line up your your angle and like ollie at the right time, and then try and like get the heel flip finish by the time you like got boat your trucks down for a five zero, and then like. To do like a, a, a or a five a fifty fifty and a two or five you had to like lean back to get the manual on and then to like kick out it was it was all about the minutia of the skills themselves, um and then it was also set in this like actual open world whereas Tony Hawk was still I mean they eventually had like bigger bigger maps but like it was always still like level based right, uh so yeah it was just like a, a great like super fun new way to play skateboarding games. Yeah, like I I. I, I you don't want to just focus too much on the skating aspect as in like mm. the skater community who play this game because like with fifa or whatever you don't need to be a footballer to play the game and to to love it or to not love it or whatever mm. but like i think kind of the proof of the pudding here is that this there's still uh, skaters who will in their downtime 
play the game Skate. They won't play the game yeah. uh, Tony Hawk 2, really. Come on. It's, it's, a, it's a blast from the past. It was a bit of fun. It's, it's as much a puzzle game as it is a simulation of skating. And mm. I don't know, guys. I, I, I honestly think the two series, like Skate made three really good games, and Tony Hawk has made dozens of games, and a couple of them have been okay. And mm. good. Okay, I'm being a bit harsh. Tony Hawk 2 and Tony Hawk 3 are, are really good games. Mm. Underground and Underground 2, I don't know. Uh, aren't great yeah and, and then uh, yeah and then everything weird. since then yeah proving grounds america wasteland project eight like they're all total also rands but like i think two and three yeah are pretty pretty like classic video games yeah but i think uh it's a, it's a great entry and i think it's gonna go pretty high uh james I do you play say. much skate i know just a little bit just here and there i think i would have played it like some of your guys' houses just sort of you know knocking about and it was sort of interesting to play it from that level of the game of you know because again I'm 100% Team Tony Hawk that's what I grew yeah. up on the first probably pretty much up until Bed on the Ground too, um, and it was interesting to play that way that sort of almost yeah made it very technical uh, and I could see the appeal to it but also there was a comfortability with Tony Hawk's of just throwing it on and playing mm-hmm. a few levels and, and treating it more like yeah, I, I, I always consider it more of like an arcade game than a skating game because it is about combos and getting points and getting high scores and doing that type of thing. So yeah, there's definitely a level there. I mean, I feel but like I will... like Dennis is right. The second skate game was probably the one that like really just nailed it perfectly. You know, it, it's a lot more in terms of the feature set. Uh, you know, a lot more interesting like little game modes and whatnot. The open world was sort of better designed as well. Um, but yeah, uh, Skate One is still a still a classic game. It's it's uh, it's a game that like skaters around the world really loved. Just as you said, so. I guess it's uh, it has that it has that going for it. Uh, where where about to be thinking in terms of the list though? Because it is kind of like it's a really great game, but it is also a little bit niche, especially the first one. Yeah, um, something pretty high, I think. I think it really is a good game. I think on its own merits, it's just a good game. Um, I think it's somewhere in around the Spiral Dragon range. That's mm. nine for anybody who's not looking at the list right now. Yeah, I guess James, you're probably not going to call anything on this one because you haven't played much of it. So uh, I, yeah, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I don't know. I'm thinking like maybe right under La Noir is where I am, like seven. Yeah, yeah. I I but. was just testing the waters there. I didn't want to. Look too <laughs> I, I, I don't want a backlash. I couldn't deal with that right now. I mean, um, I think we're literally talking like the two of us adore this series, though. So yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm trying I'm... to like mediate my own thoughts here because <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I could just. I could put this pretty high. Um, I think, yeah, probably above L.A. Noir. Like, I, I certainly, again, going back to that little test of which would you play if given yeah. only those two options. I'd play yeah. Skate over L.A. Noir. There's, there's no doubt in my mind. Mm. I think you're both in that camp, and I think I'm okay with that too, if it lived at number six. This will be interesting, because I feel like anyone who's on Team Skate will be like, fuck yeah, get it up there in like the top, top six, top five. But... Anyone who hasn't is going to be like, what? Really? That weird skateboarding offshoot game EA tried to do to beat Activision's Tony Hawk series? Um, which they did. Which, I mean, they, they kicked it into the dirt. And then I think actually what happened from when I interviewed Tony Hawk last year was that, like, there just wasn't enough people to play both of them. So then they ended up both dying. Yeah. <laughs> it split the, split the user base. Um, oh, I mean, I feel like the first skate was a really, like so much of the reason why we love it is because of the how fresh and new it was for a sport mm. game so i think some of that's lost when you come forward in the future i feel like skate 2 was always was just a better like overall package sure so i kind of want to yeah like like maybe because like in my head i think if i think of any of the skate games it's like top three you know for me so sure. i don't know where do we do we think do you think about la noir i think right under la noir well it can go either side i can uh, there's there's two like, more to come up. Yeah, there's two more to come up. But um, like, I put it this way: they would, right now, if they were the next two to come up, they'd they'd be above Skate anyway. Mm. But I'd have no problem having them in behind, say, like Crash Bandicoot and Sunset Overdrive and things like that. But yeah, I don't know if 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 you're strongly feeling under La Noir, then that's okay. It's pretty it's a good ranking spot for Skate. It's a really good game. But yeah, it was the the start of a series that got better. Yeah. All right, we do it. Number seven. Okay. I'm happy with awesome. that. Awesome. There we go. Number seven. Transistors pushed down to number eight. Skate, which I believe is spelt S K. Did they do dots between each one or something? Or was a skate and then a dot after it? 
I think that's what it was. Really? That was just skate. Yeah. <laughs> Let me look it up. Skate. Okay, no, it's probably just skate. All right, whatever. I'm just being a tool. Skate! It's in there. Number Perfect. seven. Okay, and the last entry from Nick Dumain, Nick Dumain's list is another Xbox 360 game, a little bit later in the life cycle than the original Skate game. Uh, a little bit later in the life cycle of this franchise that it's in, actually. It's the third game in a franchise which originally debuted on the Xbox 360. And much in the way that Skate was trying to, you know, steal the crown from Tony Hawk, this game was attempting to steal the crown from Grand Theft Auto. Oh, this know. is... You got what do you think that is? That's surely the same. Is it, was it either... Like Saints Row or Crackdown or something. Yeah, Saints Row the Third. That's the one. 2011 Saints Row the Third. Um, the third in the in the weird ass Saints Row franchise. Uh, what's your experience with Saints Row, Dennis? Yeah, I've played. I think up to three, uh, mm. a reasonable amount. Now, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. If I'm remembering wrongly, but Saints Row Three is the one where it starts getting a bit batshit, right? Yes. It wasn't Saints Row too, yeah. too batshit originally. It was a little bit pulpy, but not mental. Yeah. You're right. Saints Row 4 is the one where they like did the Arthur Fonzarelli in the background of James's shot there and jumped the shark. Um, Saints Row 1 was like almost a straight laced GTA wannabe. Yeah. And then 2 was a little bit weirder. And then 3 was the one where they went to a new town and it was like, okay, you got crazy guns. We'll let you do whatever the hell you want. There's The, the whole map is open. You can steal any cars or build whatever you want. Like it was... Saints Row 3 was the one where the third story mission in the game was you skydiving into a pool party with Kanye West's song playing in the background. Like, it was just dumb. Uh, James, did you play Saints Row the third at all? Uh, very little. But what I will say is I did appreciate that it did sort of find its own, like, market and, like, did its own thing. Mm. Uh, because I do agree, like, with Saints Row, I played little, played little of the first three. And uh, very much one seemed like a, you know, trying to be a GTA, taking that style, doing mm. it the same way as, like, this. Dennis mentioned Crackdown. These are the two games that first came to my mind. Uh, two, I know, again, was a little bit crazier. It starts with the prison break and sort of runs around with a few things. Yeah. And then three, I, I sort of enjoyed the fact that they're like, now, okay, look, we're just going to be tongue-in-cheek. We're going to do crazy stuff. You're going to have crazy weapons. And this way we can sort of, like, we're not going to try and beat GTA or be like GTA. We're going to do our own thing and set it up. Yeah, because I think so. like the first one came out during a period where there was no GTA game, so it was like, oh great, you know, an Xbox 360 GTA thing. Um, and then there had been, I guess, by the time uh, 2 and 3 came out. So like 3 was the one that had, you know, like there was a like VTOL jet in it and like the dildo bat, and I think there was like a drone strike thing as well, like loads of just zany ass did, crazy weapons. Did 3 weaponry. have the shit spreading or was that 2? Oh, I don't know. Oh, the I think I'm where you too. take over like a shit tanker, <laughs> spray it all over people. I, I don't. I can't remember. That I think might that, either my one. God says it was two, but again, uh, my memory's foggy. Three was three was the one where like you had the, the one of the characters in the game was like this massive dude who could only you could only ride around with him with him in the back of a like a jeep or something. It was the one. Do you remember there was a level where you're like riding around with like a lion in the front of your car or something, and you couldn't like take drive too fast or freak out or something like that <laughs> yeah no there's a there's a lot of good comedy as well like it's not all just like hokey kind of like you know that that it was a lot of funny stuff like that that was just mm. mental enough just on that that line between crazy annoying and crazy funny uh, yeah and then four was the one where it got like it almost went yeah super crazy where there was like romance options that were basically you went up to somebody press square and they just had sex <laughs> Which is pretty pretty nuts. Uh, that was also the one that like the end of the game basically turns into a different video game, without getting into spoilers. It turns into a sort of a, yeah, it's sort of it's a weird game. Um, but yeah, three was fun, right? Three was like a fun open world game in the time where there were lots of fun open world games. Yep, that sounds about right. Uh, maybe not the highest achievement in video games, but yeah. So like, right. I I don't know why, but I always like to like say the other things it's gonna compare to and like. So Crackdown is one, all the GTAs mm. are another, including LA Noir and Red Dead. And then the Just Cause games are probably its nearest competitor in nice. that they also kind of occupy that open world space, but mental. Yeah. Not as comedy based, but also mental. Mm. All right, so where do we think it's going to go then? Um, yeah, like it's a, it's a fun game, but I don't love it. If I'm being <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, it's it's a game that was like it, fun. To, it's like a, a DVD you probably wouldn't have rented, but it was like, oh, it was like way better than I thought it was. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, it's almost like that movie Shoot 'Em Up, where it's just sort of like you'll watch it once or twice and be like, oh, that was good fun. It was kind of crazy. Yeah. Uh, tongue in cheek, but it's never going to be something that you'll really fall in love with. Dennis, is it better or worse than The Club? Oh, <laughs> it's better than The Club. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> That's better than that remake of Mercenaries and stuff. So. It's not as good yeah. as John Woo's Stranglehold, just while we're talking about weird oh, Xbox wow. 360. I love that so, game. Obviously, that was a lot more level-based, but... Yeah, God, that game, that's an interesting one. That'll be a tough one to rank if that comes yeah, up. Jeez. For sure. Uh, so this one maybe around the, like, 12 I'm to 14 it, range or something? I I'm, I was thinking it's probably going to fall somewhere between 10 and 15. Hmm. Uh, somewhere between Spyro and Super Hexagon. Yeah, maybe ahead of Angry Birds. I mean, is it better than City Heroes? I think so. Yeah, I think Probably doesn't go higher than Call of Duty 2. No, no. it can't go above yeah. that. So it's, it's somewhere below maybe, Call of Duty 2. Maybe there in the middle? What do you think? 12 between Call of Duty and City of Heroes? Yeah, okay, I think I that's fair. I that. mean, I, I, I applaud THQ from going, we have... Our generic GTA game. How do we not make it a generic GTA game? You're right. And like, we'll make it batch. As as Dennis said, tongue in cheek, and hopefully, as you said, jump the shark number four where they go super bad shit. <laughs> but uh, it was it was refreshing. It, it honestly piqued my interest from going, uh Saints Row. It's just a GTA wannabe mm. to being like, oh, okay, wait, what is actually going on here? All right. In fact, I might go to New Vem later and buy it and <laughs> buy some more stuff in Brazil. Uh- <laughs> Uh, all right, there we go. Uh, apologies, Diddy Kong Country Two. We have to stick you in the parole or in the purgatory of lies. Uh, sorry, guys. I th- I I wrongfully assumed that you played that one, but I guess you played all, I, all the. I you ones. know what? I feel bad because I have played a lot of it and I just couldn't do it justice. Yeah. And I will just say this before: not to change your minds, or if you do go to purgatory and play it, um, the thing about it really is, is it's just. I mean, it's the second Donkey Kong Country. Right. It's not as good as the first one. It's okay. It's it's but it's it's doesn't light the world on fire okay uh donkey kong country the first one is amazing it's probably arguably a top five game uh and then you know even donkey kong country returns in the wii is fantastic uh donkey country 2 it's just more of it so i will i will say that but i do think it should go to purgatory just in case you guys think i'm wrong all right we'll give it a go we'll see what happens and our other two entrants there we have skate entering at number seven doing all right and saints row the third not in third, in twelfth instead. Uh, okay, let's get to a, a new list here. This one comes in from Ian Harris. He says, "Hi guys, enjoying the podcast? It's great." And these are my po- uh, my following picks. Uh, they're all different takes on the genre they're in. Keep up the good work, guys. Okay, so three sort of, I would say, third person action games. The first one, uh, one of them we've talked a bunch about uh, Xbox 360 games already, and this is perhaps the Xbox 360 game. Uh, they're attempting to make another one right now at the moment. This is from designer Cliff Lazinski. The folks at Epic Games, who seemed like they were done and dusted after Unreal Tournament and a bunch of failed or sort of medium sequels. This is Gears of War. Every Xbox 360 owner in 2006 picked up this bad boy. We've had four games since. Uh, Gears of War 2, Gears of War 3, Gears of War Judgment. And the uh, the fourth one is is in the making, uh, but not necessarily from Cliff Blazinski anymore. Uh, yeah, Gears of War. I'm assuming all three of us have played a bunch of this bad boy. Yes. How about yourself, James? You two, you two definitely have played more than I have. Um, I have I've actually watched the two of you play a lot of it as well. Mm. Um, I'll be sort of in abstention from this list. Uh, the only thing I will say is me being angsty in around 2006, whenever this came out. I remember seeing it and being like, it's nothing on Resident Evil 4. And I just sort of <laughs> mished it away, and that was very much my attitude to it. Um, but it's it's a good-looking game. At least a, this is the first one we're yes. putting in the list, or? Okay. Uh, yeah, first one we've gone to, too. Uh, yeah, it was uh, the first sort of, as they say, cover shooter around the time. There were other cover shooters that had come out, but this was the sort of the first big mainstream one. Uh, third Third person shooter game with a big campaign, and then a very addictive... Multiplayer, multiplayer component as well Dennis what's your take on the first Gears of War game uh, yeah I think I think it's the best uh, again you know me I like to make a sweeping kind of general statement that I may not back you, up you at, think the first one's the best Gears of War game yeah I think so um, oh wow so well I obviously I think it, it brought forward a lot of things you you just mentioned them uh, oh. like the cover shooter like it, it, you know it made that a genre of its own 
Um, I just remember, like, so this for me was the dawn of, like, HD console gaming. Right, so yeah. So I just remember being blown away by that. Now, again, we had a, a comment earlier uh, about how, you know, we we kind of change how much we give importance to, the, to its technicalities, but, like, mm. I thought, oh, it was just so gorgeous at the time. It was incredible. I, of all the things, I think the the act of reload... Just right. Like that, that was just the yeah. best. When they brought that in, that was just the best. It allowed you to, like, it's like a little mini power up that just changed the game. I don't know. Mm. Uh, I actually went back and replayed the whole, the original trilogy um, in cooperative with, with a buddy of ours. And, oh, uh, cool. That was only a couple of years ago now. Uh, so it holds up. You see, that's the thing. The, from, you mentioned Resi 4. From around that kind of time, most games are at least like 3d action games we don't really notice like any graphical difference disparity between now and then or at least i don't maybe, maybe mm. it's come from growing up in the 8-bit era but uh like yeah and any game from around that time like say we go back and play a ps kind of one game you know no. uh n64 yeah. game yeah you're, you're thinking okay this is wildly different but if you go back and play like you know star fox on the gamecube or whatever and has all that fur and stuff and you're able to say like oh that looks gorgeous that looks gorgeous kind of by today's standards a bit so anyway i'm gonna get digressing but it's uh yeah it's a wonderful game it absolutely like you don't notice any drop off when you play the three of them consecutively in my opinion and, right and then the multiplayer just that was just just so good right yeah it was co-op as well which was sort of something that you really weren't used to playing on consoles like they were forcing you into into teams of uh four i'm remembering in my head um Maybe, yeah. yeah four on four uh then there was all the the horde mode stuff i guess that came after the fact was that gears of war 2 where all the horde mode stuff came in let me have yeah, a i feel like that wasn't in the first one but i could i could be wrong you know it's funny when you were saying it i was thinking nah, i haven't really played much of this game thinking of the main campaign uh and then once you started talking about it, I realized like a memory flooding back. In fact, playing with you guys a lot was the multiplayer. Mm. Uh, and I went, oh, holy shit. I have played way more time and made way more of this game than I remembered. And I agree with Dennis. Like it was like just, uh, I forget the name of the creatures that you're against, but locusts, like you know, the locusts. Yeah. Like just even the, the look of them was fantastic. The shading, the color. Yeah. You should play Unreal uh, Tournament 3 because that's basically what the locusts look like. If you, they're the, the baddies from that. Uh, yeah. So Gears 2 is the one where horror mode came in. Um, but yeah, Gears 1, really good campaign. Interesting sort of, you know, environments. I think the, the, the fight at the end with Ram on the train is perhaps maybe the, the dampest part of that entire experience. Um, but otherwise pretty great, you know, grenade tagging, chainsawing, using sniper rifles, like just what Epic were always really good at was making games with interesting weaponry. And I think Gears of War was a, was a sort of an evolution of that as well. Um, in my head, Gears of War 2 is a better game. I, I remember enjoying the campaign more and the, uh, I guess the multiplayer had a lot more to it because it was just more modes as you tend to get in sequels. Um, but yeah, the first game is still, uh, still a, a super game you can get the hd version of it now as well which we did some graphics comparisons at GameSpot, and it looks good in H hd yeah, hd i don't know what i'm saying hd for um but uh yeah yeah it looks uh it, it looks a lot better now i think than at least when you look at youtube footage of gears of war one now it looks like crap but i think that probably has more to do with youtube compression back in two, 2000 well yeah the sure. like recording back in 2000 and whatever um 2006 so yeah this game's 10 years old almost guys that's fucked up <laughs> hell of a game hell of a my game. goodness all right where's it going on the list on you it's going above that last game we ranked for sure saints right? row yeah is, is it about Do you guys put it above i think it goes above la noir whoa really it goes up there? Go there for the first gears well maybe you're only holding back then because you know the second one has to go above it yeah maybe it's okay. well it's definitely top 10 anyway oh there's no doubt um, yeah, better than Pod Racer. Probably better than Transistor, although that yeah. might be where we start to have a an issue. No, it's better than Transistor. I guess it's better than Skate as well. Like it's it's one of those games. Uh, here's the, here's the devil's <laughs> advocate question. Uh, you one of you two is holding a party. You know, having a few <laughs> beers. You got a table out. Yo, you know, Xbox M &M's 360 one party. Exactly. You got some chips and the other thing, and you got a crowd crowd of people, and you're like, hey guys. Should we log into a game of Skate or a game of uh, Gears of War? Skate. Which one are you going to pick first? Really? Oh wow! Oh, this is going to this is going to be a difficult one, I think. 
I don't know. I think you're. I think yeah. I oh. Uh, no, no, I'm I'm second guessing. <laughs> uh, well, I wouldn't invite people over to play Xbox 360 games. That would be a crazy. Are you person. sure? You've never uh, done that before. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't do it in 2016. <laughs> I think it's a nostalgia. You make it a you make it a 2000s party. You know. Yeah, I'll come over. Let's crack open cameo for one more time. Um, let's have a let's have a yeah let's have a game of Jambara. fucking rage. <laughs> Odi Jambara. Bikini <laughs> fighting squad. Uh, we'll play some Pro Evo 2016 or 2006. That's gonna be a fun list whenever everyone sends in the Pro Evs, the PS2 ones. Um. All right, uh, I don't know. If I was to guess, I'd say... I don't know, I kind of... Mm. Mm. Every, it's like every time you look at one above it, you're like, really? Yeah. Is it, it's like, how can I possibly say that Sunset Overdrive is better than the first Gears of War game? Like, I guess I can. You can, but you probably wouldn't for the second, so... Well, See, if there was a sequel to Sunset everything. Overdrive that was better, I probably wouldn't put Sunset Overdrive in fifth. Yeah, I th- I think I think again from my own personal enjoyment of what I did get out of the little compared to you guys mm. of Gears of War, I would almost put it above LA Noir. But that's almost for you too. You two don't want to make that decision, but I will make it for you and say. <laughs> See, here's the funny thing because this is this is the like I, I'm 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 stuck in comparing games on a like a one v one basis. Yeah. yeah. So if, if Skate was above LA Noir, I'd put it behind Skate and above LA Noir. <laughs> but right now okay. I want to put it behind Skate in 8 uh, I'm confusing myself right yeah this is what ha- this is what happens when you build a list this is like it becomes this you're not even we're not even analysing the quality of this game anymore we're analysing the quality of our list because <laughs> <laughs> okay. like I'm thinking you know what I'd put, I'd put it in 5th I'd put it above Skate, LA Noir, Sunset Overdrive I'd put it behind Crash Bandicoot you know what's funny? I, I'm looking at this list right now, and I'm saying Mario Strikers Charged is probably the luckiest bastard that it came <laughs> oh, on the list when it did, because right. it's because it, it's in this weird like no man's land where like it's it's perfectly like wedged between Super Mario World, Super Meat Boy, then there's this Mario Strikers Charge that's sort of like stuck there, and then Crash Bandicoot, so it can't really wedge in either way. We're gonna have to come up with some iron clad rules for the pro board because uh, yeah. this yeah. is this this list needs to be. Up. Is it gonna is it gonna, is it gonna be one of those things where it's like oh wait actually we found a bloody glove in my striker's charge test <laughs> with, with seven ten bliss oh, you shouldn't be there at all oh, okay man. we we'll go fifth gears of war because it really was great and it is definitely a good series uh, well forget the HD remaster because that's a mess even if you, even if you think it looks good it forms like trash um, yeah what what difference what happened to the HD remaster that that changed or uh, made it trash it just, it was just utterly broken for for a while at least if if not currently uh there's no no pc drivers for either of the major vendors worked i love that you're saying this because you also are the person who played batman with absolutely no problems last year problem free 60 fps all the time like i don't know i don't know what the issue was i think it was was all did you get your refund mass hysteria absolutely not i bought it off some random cd key website so i'll also go back to them but uh Uh, wait hold on a sec Is, is gears of war now on pc uh yes this war has always get been on the... pc it was on yeah. games for windows oh okay the but uh hey. the new one well sorry the hd remaster is on the windows store which is also mm. oh okay yeah. it's gotta yeah, be hammered is... for that right um, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, why we hammered minesweeper five is safe right yeah all right fifth i think fifth james what do you think i'm fine with that too i i you know what i know how much you guys played it and as you said like initially i was like ah, it was a war it was what it was it was of its time and then some, I somehow completely blanked the multiplayer till he said it, and I was like, "Oh shit!" I played hours of that well, you with go. you guys, awesome. and that stuff. So that's it. Fifth. Nostalgia wins over. Top five game, new top five game in there: Gears of War, Crash Bandicoot, uh, Mario Strikers, Shards, Super Meat Boy, and Super Mario World are the only better games than Gears of War. There we have said it. Uh, it's above Sunset Overdrive. It's above LA Noir. It's above Skate. Another new addition this. Uh, week we've got time for a couple of more new additions too we have to get through the rest of mr ian harris's list here uh hit the next game uh actually another game in a series that is having a rejuvenation this year or at least another entry into it this is the second entry in a series which has quickly become the sort of poster boy for the playstation uh made by the same people who made the game that is currently sitting number fourth in our list naughty dog this is Uncharted 2. 
The second Uncharted. That's what the... No, it's Uncharted 2 Among Thieves. Among Thieves. You guys played Uncharted 2 Among Thieves? Hot PlayStation uh, 2 video game? PlayStation 3 video game? Uh, yes. All right. Yes, okay. Who wants, to, who wants to pick up the cudgel on this bad boy? Go ahead, Danny. Come on. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, so, I guess Drake's Fortune was a sort of a... I remember, at least at the time, it being a like surprisingly good game like i wasn't very much looking forward to it it was to me it was like oh here's this you know uh, it's basically tomb raider but with a guy um so i wasn't i guess i probably wasn't looking forward to it very much and then i was i was sort of taken aback by it so by the time the second one came around that was the one that i was like okay i actually really want to sort of um dive into this bad boy so i guess i wasn't super into the first one but the second one like right from the start when you have that whole you know it opens with you hanging off this like train you know somewhere in i don't know snowy part of the world nepal probably right um yeah it was uh it was just like it was like that was naughty dog stepping into their like cinematic boots they were like okay we're gonna make this game which it's not just you know there was shades of it in the first one but the second one was was like we're not just making a third person action game we're making like this insane indiana jones style movie you've never seen anything like this before it's going to be bombastic it's going to have characters you like it's going to have really good voice actors you know i mean nolan north basically cut his teeth on nathan drake um and yeah it had like super shooting for a third person game on a, a playstation and then also it was the one that brought the multiplayer and the multiplayer in uncharted 2 uh, especially for folks who own playstation 3s like is still it's as memorable maybe for people who owned playstation 3s as gears of war was for people who owned xbox 360s um so yeah like i think i it has a lot going for it and the third one was like i wasn't super into as much i mean two i think is the one that a lot of uncharted fans say is the best one although reviews now are saying that four might be even better um but yeah two is the one that sort of goes down as the pinnacle um in the series at least in in, in terms of hindsight uh what do you what do you think that is it's been a while probably since you played this one so it's kind of hard it to has been remember. a while yeah um the first and second ones i remember loving the third one i didn't love mm. uh, number two two was pretty great uh i definitely i don't know do i agree or just completely disagree on how its multiplayer would stack up against gears of war now right we, we we at least come from the background of we had both consoles we played whatever games on whatever console it didn't mm. uh, we did our best to avoid the console war or at least i did and uh yeah i don't think it quite would have like it definitely had a reasonable community around it but like gears of war multiplayer was gigantic you know servers were always full it was just always mm. super fun and really active um I feel like that might have been the best on that system at that time. Just because I was super not that, into sure. resistance or kill zone or yeah. any of that shit. I certainly didn't put, say, into the multiplayer, you know, 20, 30, 40 hours into it. Like I might mm. have put Gears of War. Um, so I couldn't put it it's multiplayer in, in the same space for me. But uh, yeah, the, the, the cinematic quality of the campaign, the, the games look gorgeous. Yeah. Um, super fun platforming if a tiny bit frustrating at times um i uh, i've been going back playing a certain purgatory uh, platformer that is <laughs> absolutely joyous and it suffers from the odd control issue i think uncharted one and two don't think they were super present in three but there were mm. control issues in the first two i remember like you'd be on a pillar trying to jump to another pillar and you're sure you're jumping straight on and you do the exact thing 10 times in a row. You die nine times. And on 10, you're like, I've just done the exact same thing. And I've, I've survived for some reason. Mm. For reasons I can't understand. And, I kind of uh, remembered the same thing with the stealth in 2. Where they, they, the stealth was sort of there, but it never really worked the way you wanted it to. So it, it was almost like you just ended up shooting people just because that was the, the best way of doing things. It speaks to the quality of the game that I'm really nitpicking to find something that bothered me. Because they were yeah. both, and three to a point, I was just maybe fatigued with the series. But the first two were certainly wonderful games, no doubt mm. in my mind. James, what are your experiences with the Uncharted series? Um, I agree. I think, funnily enough, and I wonder if it's a trend with a lot of people, uh, I agree with you across the board where I played one and two, uh, played part of three, and then just sort of put it down mm. and just was like, eh. Like, I've often thought about going back to it, but it just it didn't connect with me the same way. Um, I agree 100%. Two was a vast improvement on one. 
Uh, one was great fun. There's a lot of mechanics and action, and, and the sort of the, the core of the game is still there. But like as you said, when you start the second game, and the first scene you get is Nathan Drake hanging off a train, and like you're climbing, like there's no introduction. It's just sort of here you're going through, and then there's like a flashback. Uh, it really shows you what Naughty Dog put into it as a narrative yeah. or as a storytelling thing. They seem to have a confidence the, with the second one that they didn't have with the first. It was like, oh no, we got this. Because I think the first, well, I mean, and the first one was good. I, I, from what I remember, and I could be wrong, I think the first one starts like you just find, you know, it's almost like an Indiana Jones thing where like you find a treasure in the water and some people are after you and you're in the Caribbean and mm. it sort of goes from there. But the second one sort of like really took you all over the world. Yeah, And I think it... Um, I remember. Uh, it, it just really. I just. It was a. Little, it was just better done for for that regard, um, and that there was just those elements to it that just it it sort of added to it without losing what it was. Whereas I I think that's what bothered me with three, is it almost two strikes a perfect balance between having a great story with cutscenes and action and fighting, and then at least for where the point I got in three. It was way too heavy on the narrative side, mm. and it was way too. It almost sort of what you were complaining about the order last week, where it was like, "Oh, press square now," and then it would just go to a cutscene. At least to the part I got to in three, it felt way too much that I would walk down a street, I would get another cinematic, there'd be like two minutes of action, then I'd walk down a street, get another cinematic, and I was just like, "I, I just want to play a game." When you play something like Uncharted, you want to play a game where you can sit down, put music on in the background, or listen to you know the soundtrack, just shoot guys for about twenty minutes go through the level shoot some more people throw some grenades hide behind you know a wall mm. and then uh, go on through to the next part and then get like at the end of you know end of level cinematic um, so that was yeah and even the multiplayer as you said I, I remember we played a good bit of that here and there uh, it was fun it, like it was it, it sort of felt like it needed to be there and it probably was PlayStation's answer to console multiplayer for a long time it, or at least that sort of third person and it did it well yeah it's uh, I was just thinking back about some of the memories that were in that do you remember the level where you had the Sherpa and he couldn't speak the same language? Where you were just like jumping from ice cave to yes. ice cave? Like there's so many yeah, great yeah. little memories in Uncharted. Uh, all right, let's stay, let's try and find somewhere to list it. I am assuming this is going somewhere near the top, Mr. Dennis Walsh. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know why, but Crash Bandicoot is very hard to move and I think that might remain the case. It's, for me, again, having not really played Sunset Overdrive, but I'm certainly deferring to your enjoyment of it, mm. um, it's some. It's going in that region, five, six, seven, surely. It's, it's, it's higher for me. Noir. Yeah, so it's better than yeah. Sunset Overdrive. Thing. So it's it's. It, for me, it's mm. either side of Gears of War. Then. Uh, what do you think, James? Um, I think six. I think I think you guys again don't want to push too much your your fandom for Gears of War, so I'll do it for you. But uh, um, or maybe it's me not knowing that much about Gears. I don't want to sort of step on any toes. Um, yeah, I think I think it's behind Crash Bandicoot for me personally. Uh, that's probably a lot of nostalgia or what crashed it at the time. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful game. I'm sure to really mm. like. There's some games that you can sort of say that they sort of gain favoritism just because the console didn't have a lot, or it's like their first party or or what it tried to do, but. Just Uncharted Two is just a great game. So it just, it's I'm just, a little bit worried like, because I actually kind of think this is going higher for me. So I think uh, it's weird. So Uncharted Two is like a full package. We just talked about Gears of War, which is this game that has like a super interesting campaign, and especially for the time. And you could say the same about Uncharted Two, where it was like probably the best third-person action game that had been made. It's like platformy sort of action game, as opposed to like a very I don't know. Gears was a bit more shooter, shooter, shooter. Um, but like Gears did have this other aspect where it had this like fantastic multiplayer component um, but I'll be completely honest I find it difficult to put Uncharted 2 which is arguably the best Uncharted game lower than Mario Strikers Charged yeah that's the problem that's the, that's the problem with this goddamn list <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, we've made a Job like huge mistake um, yeah so we need to rectify that yeah, look, see, that's the thing. It's better than Mario Strikers Charged, right? Mm. Yeah. Surely. Yeah. 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 Fine, but I can't. I I can't and will not put it above Super Meat Boy because uh, it's just not as good. <laughs> Super Meat Boy is absolutely great. Should be top. I will fight that for the rest of my life. But. <laughs> um, yeah, like I think, like I that's I think that's where my head's at is is that it's it might be sitting there like in third i don't know it's like a worthy third game it's like well because uncharted one and three will come up and they're not going to get anywhere near there like they're, no, they're going to get no. close but they're not going to get 
Like, this is the one shot for Uncharted to get in the top. Those those PlayStation fanboys already uh, see hey. the order sitting down pretty at the bottom. That's true. That's true. That's that's the life you live if you're a PlayStation. Highs and lows, peaks and troughs. Um, yes. Yeah, Uncharted Four, though, we haven't played it yet. You know that could that could go as high as. It's true. 50. Although we all, although also I shouldn't be saying that because like we should be talking about these games isolated. Obviously, obviously we're not. Um, well, I feel bad there because I feel like I forced my hand on like three of today's. No, 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 no. No, I, I no, I don't think so. It's, it's I mean, I like I think. Here's, here, I've said it a hundred times already, I'm just repeating myself, but like, say if Mario Strikers Charged was down in like 7th or something, hmm. I'd be okay with this, but it bothers me to be pushing like Gears of War straight away down to 6th and stuff. But, right. um, yeah. Mario Strikers Charged okay is the, the elephant in the room here, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I could, I could, yeah, I see that's the thing, I could see it sitting behind Crash Bandicoot, but if Crash Bandicoot was at like number 3... <laughs> I'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, no charter two is number four, um, or it can go. You know what? I'm fine with it being three. I'm, I'm could, okay with work, three because three. Well, look, here's the thing: it's definitely better. Mario Strikes Charged, um, mm. like again, bar my own absolutely huge preference for Super Meat Boy, right? Like this, uh, there's a really strong argument that goes above that. I I won't listen to that argument. I will not be a part of it. <laughs> but I'm okay with it being number three. I respect your love of Meat Boy, and I also hold a similar love. Maybe not as strong, but um, I, I actually think if I was to put the two of them together, I would come up with the same uh, as you. I would say that Meat Boy is a is a. I think Meat Boy, yeah, like we're we're on the same page. Meat Boy is like one of the most fucking tremendously perfect games ever made. Um, all right, so we say third. Happy with that. Okay, put a third. All right, new third. The 2009 PlayStation 3 game. You can also play it as of last year on some sort of HD situation um, uh, on the PlayStation 4. But there it is. It's our new third game, pushing down the, the incumbent Mario Strikers Charge, which was sitting in third place since I believe the uh, it was second place, I think, at one stage. Um, it might have been first, actually, for a while in the first two episodes. Uh, so there you go. A lot of movement from Ian's list. We have one more to get through. Uh, Ian Harris, he already gave us uh, two wonderful third-person action games. And the third, while not having the same sort of massive effect... It's not Mass Effect, sorry. I thought it was <laughs> 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 while not having the same impact, shall we say, as either Uncharted or Gears of War, uh, was a very special game that came out in 2002 by 2K Games. And on the face of it seemed like a very generic third-person action game but actually was fucking with you the entire time. This is Spec Ops The Line. Oh, Dennis, you look sad. Have you not played it? Uh, no, I haven't, unfortunately. James, have you played it? Okay, this is perfect purgatory fodder. This is perfect, I think. If you guys want to do it, if you guys want to get into it. I, I will. I you going to go, play I can it? Deal. I can deal with that. Okay, Spec Ops is i don't even want to talk about it now because spec ops is a game that is like i wonder what it's going to be like going back and playing it f like three years later four years later because it is basically a generic third person action game but it's also like intentionally a generic third person action game. like it's it's a weird thing it's a game that has layers that don't really appear until after a little while Okay, I'm I'm actually really interested about rating this one. So if if okay, no, is it a I I, I'm in I'm in. Uh, what's the, what's the price look like? I even looked at it on we have Steam. A quick, uh, nosy. It's uh oh I have it here. It's uh tw oh it's actually thirty bucks. I can share it out to you guys. I can share it out. I have it on my one. I can I'll share it out a, to you I'll guys. I'll have a little look around some of those uh the dark sides yeah. of the internet. <laughs> All right, that should be a good one. All right, that's cool. So we've got a couple of games in. I guess you guys have already played Stanley Parable, so I need to play that. We've got Donkey Kong Country 2, Spec Ops The Line, and also Ratchet and & Clank. Did you, did, were you suggesting you played it already, Dennis? I've nearly completed it, yeah. Oh, really, wow, really? It, it's really a game. Uh, where, I gamed it. Where? It was actually uh, on sale on PSN on the PS3 at the moment. So oh, right. So I got right. the trilogy, yeah. I got the HD trilogy. So, okay, I, I hope everybody's okay with me playing the HD, slightly HD remaster. I yeah. don't think there's any changes to it. Um, That's fine, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, so I have the whole trilogy and I won't say any more, but I'm okay. sure we'll have a later purgatory discussion. 
that's great because a bunch of people were asking it'd be cool for us to get around to it and obviously we said that we may not Literally we'll comments see comments on youtube for sure from some yeah. of our, our listeners yeah well, awesome i'll discuss those uh, uh that's cool i i think maybe it also works on vita i'm not sure so i might actually pick it up on vita yeah you can uh, if if it's still on sale it's only like 12 euros so maybe okay cool bucks something like that for the trilogy awesome well we got a bunch of games there in, in purgatory maybe we have another purgatory episode coming up um in the not too distant future uh, thank you so much to everyone for else for sending in uh entries we have so many here i've got a bunch more on today's one we didn't get to either but we we most certainly will um i'm gonna put a maybe a shout out Let, let's all put a shout out for like maybe uh games that we're not getting because we're getting a lot of sort of well i guess i'm the one that gets to see the the what games pop up i feel like we're getting a lot of last generation sort of playstation 3 xbox games we're getting a lot of like everyone's mentioned stuff like half-life and the sims and things like that so i wonder like i'd personally like to see if we could get a bit more like i don't know like some dreamcasty stuff or maybe some like pc like not shooter stuff sort of like other types of pc games and um, maybe like 10 year old pc games maybe old first person pc games as well um uh, any 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 call outs for you guys a couple of strategy games we haven't touched really on strategy be it turn-based or rts or whatever so sports too actually we haven't had a many sports, sports games yet skate uh, skate and mario strikers but they're not super sportsy hmm i don't know i sort of like the pacing we're getting i think I, I would like to see some like old school yeah like as you said pc shooters get hexen somewhere on the list <laughs> but um but i definitely i definitely sort of like the way it's going i like the fact that we're actually getting good games it could have been so easy for people just to sort of send in bad games and you know, focusing on the bottom five of the lists, mm. and from the last two we've just gotten, we're almost focusing on the top ten, top five. So I've enjoyed that anyway. And the purgatory situation is nice because I actually really like the idea that we're getting like some sort of reason to go back and play these games. It's it's perhaps the most enjoyable part of doing this so far. Uh, so we got a bunch. If you want to play along, Stanley Parable, Ratchet and Clank Two, Going Commando, Donkey Kong Country Two, on the Super NES, and Spec Ops Special Operations: The Line. Uh, straight out of Dubai. That's going to be a real fun game to play. Uh, all right, and that's an episode this week, gentlemen. What are you guys going to play for the rest of your week outside of the purgatory, the purgatory, the purgatory of lies? Go Overwatch. Yeah, I need to get into that. Like I've only maybe thrown an hour or so into it, so I'd I'd like to get familiar with it. Um, and yeah, that's that's it for me. I think. Who's your go-to character right now in Overwatch? Who are you playing? Uh, right Torbjorn. Oh, love, cool. All right. I just love building me some sentry guns. Awesome. Um, what about yourself, James? Who Who's your go-to in Overwatch right now? It's been a lot of Reinhardt. Mm. Just put up that shield and just go through it. Um, and outside of that, I think I'll be playing uh, Kathy Rain, a game that just came out, a point-and-click game that came out. So. You love them point-and-click games. You get some of them in. I, 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 yeah, it's like anything scum V, I'm all over. I, it's, you know, it's what I grew up on, and it's just completely the way to go. Yeah, we were laughing about maybe getting some special guests on in future episodes. I wonder if I could twist Tim Schafer's arm and see if we could get him on to help rate some of his uh, his old games. We'll have to find out. We'd have, be to, a fun one. we'd have to bone up on our <laughs> Tim Schafer games. Would, would we? Some of us might. Some of us might be having a new... No, there might be a new number one if Tim Schafer games came on this list. So. I don't know. Cool. We'll figure it out. Well, we have a new number three this week. Uncharted 2 Among Thieves. Skate drops in. Its final place is nine. Saints Row the third, almost right in the middle. Um, in 14th, the order is 1886, currently in 26th. Uh, <laughs> giving you an update on that next week. Thank you so much, everyone who's been watching. Thank you so much for everyone who's subscribing on, on iTunes. Um, uh, and yeah, thank you so much for watching on YouTube as well. I'd really appreciate it. Send those lies in. Lies at eternaloflies.com. And myself, Dennis, and James will do our best to rate them in our ridiculous, our ever ridiculous growing in ridiculousness list of the best games ever made. Uh, thanks so much. Have a great week playing video games and we'll see you next week. Adios.